the dumbest bill in America is prison gerrymandering. What? Prison gerrymandering. Yeah, it is an I interesting said that. topic, yes. Prison gerrymandering. So, as you know, the United States Bureau of the Census, the U.S. Bureau of the Census, has to count every single American. American every 10 years. And every we are in that 10 year. And we, it's 2020, and so all Americans are being, and by the way, that's going to be difficult during a pandemic, I yeah. think. Say so, all podcast listeners. I mean, what are they going to listen? What are they going to wear? Like an astronaut suit when they go around <laughs> knocking on doors? There's actually gonna be a lot of really interesting scientific ways they do it. Yeah, they go around, they knock doors, but then they'll also like, they'll knock doors on a block and then they'll basically like multiply it by proportion of size. And so let me ask you them. something. If you knock on the door of a prison and you say, hey, I'm from the Bureau of the Census and I'm counting all of the prisoners who are incarcerated in your prison. Yeah. And uh, tell me what their names are and how many people are here. And then they get counted in the district. And they get counted and the prison is obviously fixed in a certain location. And it's part of a legislative district, a congressional district, a state. And, and, so and those individuals, of course, should be counted and yes. they are counted, uh, but they are counted as their home being in the prison because that's where they're living. Yes. Well. The dumbest bill in America is prison gerrymandering, whereby you can actually not count them where they're incarcerated, but they could actually give any address they wanted to. So get this, the bill says, here's the bill. It says at a minimum, the record that is uh, collected from the voter and from the Bureau of the Census shall contain the last known complete street address of each individual who's incarcerated the individual's, the individual's race, whether the individual is Hispanic or Latino origin, and whether the person is over the age of 18. To the degree possible, to the degree possible, the record shall also permit an alternative address to be updated as appropriate. So, so the bill is written so that if you are a prisoner and you're there amongst 3,000 other prisoners, you can give any address you want as a legislative as a legislative district, not the prison where you're actually living. So what could go wrong? Talk about gerrymandering. It isn't, yeah, I mean, you could see a lot of people start claiming certain legislative districts and things like that based on where they're from. It's an interesting concept. By the way, uh, I the think, bill sponsor is from New Jersey. Oh, uh, yeah, we talked about this. This is, <laughs> this is one of those interesting things of, that we always have to generally deal with in New Jersey. Is we always get some interesting bills that come around. So this legislature who put this in, they're from uh, Jersey City and Bayonne. So is, the legislator, by the way, her name is Senator Sandra Cunningham, yes. and it's Senate Bill 758. Yes. Go. Uh, so we always deal with a lot of these things. Now, I will say, I think the concept of prison gerrymandering is interesting in both directions. I think it's interesting that we put them in a prison and then we you know, put that prison in a district and then that district gets to be counted. So I've seen it very interesting, like I've seen it work both ways from my understanding. I am, so I'm a conservative, but I also, I do have a problem with gerrymandering, even though I do understand that there's instances of gerrymandering on both sides, but I understand that there is a history of the, like, you know, the Operation Red Map in 2010 and all that other stuff. That's time topic for another discussion. Um, <laughs> but... All right, that was like a squirrel there. Yeah, tangent. Tangent, sorry about that, everybody. But um, yeah, so back to our bill here. I think it's gonna be interesting to see how, if it even passes, did it pass? Yeah, so it get has this. passed, so, wow. So it was, it was introduced in 2019, and yes. it passed one of the houses, and then now we're in 2020, it passed the other uh, house. And, and then now that sounds like a bill that the governor, Phil would be really happy to go and the sign. The governor, yeah, Governor Murphy loves the bill, he, he has signed it. all about, It is now yeah, law. So here's yeah. the funny thing about this bill. So Sandra Cunningham, the sponsor of Senate Bill 758 said that she wants to end the practice of prison gerrymandering. But yet her bill, her idea of prison gerrymandering is that form. people are stuck in this prison and therefore they're gerrymandered out of where they would normally be living. No, they're prisoners because they committed heinous crimes and they're, they're, thus they're incarcerated. So actually what she's doing is she's gerrymandering the other with direction. prisoners. Yeah. She's actually doing she's it. She's just changing it's a who it's gerrymandered lie. for. So get this, let me unravel this for you. The language, if, the language is unraveled as follow, follows. If you are living in prison because you're an inmate and prisoner, even though you're living in prison and that's your home, you can give any address you want as your home address. And that really is what this bill does at the end of the day. I think it's, it is very interesting. Um, basically, if I had to you know, put some kind of policy forward where I think would kind of alleviate both of these concerns, I think 
we really shouldn't, and this is just generally something that popped off to me as maybe it's a millennial in me that thinks this way, but why do we even count them in terms of allocating voting prowess anyway? Because they're human beings. They should be counted as the Bureau of the as Census. As the Bureau of the Census, but yes. do we propor- should we proportion them to part of our electoral districts or should we just say that there's 60,000 people sitting in this prison here and they can't do anything one if way or the other? If they're in prison and that's their address, that's where they that's are. That's where they are. But of course, because this is Northern New Jersey, there obviously is a there's prison. A, there's a lot of prison systems up there. Yes, yeah. and yeah. that's messing up legislative districts. Well, here's an idea. Why don't you, I don't know, Work, do the, a better job as a politician yeah. and get these people jobs and opportunity yeah. and stop and start lowering prison. the taxes. Yeah. See, all this is interrelated with this blue state, this blue state stuff of being able to let them file for bankruptcy. Because if you're a Democrat and you're in office, you can't say, hey, I'm gonna lower taxes for businesses so that you know they can actually come into our community and and start you know businesses and create opportunity for the citizens here. You can't do that as a Democrat yeah, anymore. Be, yeah, You'll best, be thrown out of office. Yeah, the best way I think to, to alleviate the prison problem is to, to create wealth and create wealth across all eth- economic spectrums and all ethnic spectrums, so everybody has the opportunity to succeed. And the more you know, the more hurdles and the more burdens you place on people, the more likely they are to to not succeed. And then you know, sometimes the inevitable path that people take is crime, and it's just exactly. It's, it's unfortunate. And by the way, that's a great point. Economic opportunity. So here's State Senator Sandra Cunningham. We have a clip from her. She's the Democrat from New Jersey who introduced this bill. And she's talking about how nearby Indian and Pakistani immigrant communities help one another when they come to the United States. And how do they help one another? They loan each other money so they can start businesses. They start small businesses. They take care of their families. They're there for their families. They help their families get into higher ed and to study so they can get a better life once they come here. And I, you know, Sandra Cunningham, she's African American and good for her uh, for, for trying to speak on this issue. But it really is the central issue and prison gerrymandering it does, isn't the way you solve it. The way you solve it is to give people an opportunity but she tries to separate people by, by race as well in her statement here. Listen really closely, it's a shame. Uh, she's kind of on the right track until at the very end when she says, and we need to do that for ourselves. Uh, well, I, okay, here's the clip. Right. What can we do to develop our own selves and our own independence? If you go down in a part of Jersey City, uh, down in the Indian section, the Pakistani section, <laughs> They have their own jobs. They create their own jobs in their own community. They have their own stores. They have their own businesses. Anything you want, they have created in that part of town for them. It is for them, it is worked by them and created by them. What are we creating out here? What are we creating? Well, so the, you know, it's a great question. The, what you're creating is the blue state. Uh, the blue state legislators are creating more misery, and they've been creating misery for generations because we have intergenerational poverty. And it's a great question, uh, I think, to look at immigrant communities and say, why are they successful? Right? You know, first generation, they become very successful, um, or they're self-sufficient. Why is it that certain communities aren't that way? and certain communities are. It's a great thing to talk about. But the thing is, is when you, when you introduce bills like prison ger- gerrymandering bills, it's getting you off of the topic of how to really solve the problem. Yeah. And when you say, you know, well, because they're Indian or because they're Pakistani, they're successful and they're only doing it for themselves. No, I'm sure they would welcome anybody to come into their community to buy from their stores and buy from their gas stations and, and buy their products. Nobody is ever going to say no to money, Mark. Exactly. So it's just, it, it's a little annoying because it's a little bit of the us versus them uh, divide there. And I, I just found that kind of div- divisive. Yeah. And you, and you mentioned, Mark, that, you know, this... Um, prison gerrymandering bill doesn't really do anything to alleviate those concerns. And one of the things that I should point out to anybody who's casually listening is that 
North Northeast New Jersey is about as blue as blue gets. Yes. And so whether you're <laughs> apportioning people based on their prison address or you're apportioning them based on their previous address, it's still going to be blue up there. Yes. But what we really need to be talking about is how do we spur economic innovation? And we're talking about this throughout this, the, the podcast, and that is that you know blue states have a lot of spending. And they have a lot of, of fen- spending on social programs to to kind of, of affirm and, and prop up a lot of these communities. But I don't believe That's that how that is you typically the way. people in blue communities to vote for you. You just yeah. spend on their You'd, pet projects. And I, and I don't think that that is the way that you spur the growth that you're looking for. I think that you lower taxes, you know, you lower government spending, you lower regulatory hurdles, you allow a business to, to seek investment and, and get propped up and then That's start well accumulating said. wealth. And I think that is the proper but way Derek, to But Derek, you know what? This. The fact of the matter is, I don't know what how many people are in the prison population in New Jersey, but let's just say it's... 75,000, okay. 100, let's just say it's 100,000 people. Round numbers are Let's good, use a round yeah. number. That's a lot of people, obviously. Yeah. But let's say it's 100,000 people. And you decide with this bill, because the bill has passed now, you can now populate those 100,000 people in legislative districts that are red districts and red congressional districts and red state legislative districts. Guess what the practical effect of that is? You make the state even bluer, but you do so by cheating and the same blue politicians who have ruined the state and that are finding it necessary to maybe file for bankruptcy um, are the same ones who keep, I don't know, cheating. It is interesting. This is gonna be one of those bills that we're gonna take a look at 10 years from now and we're really gonna see the the effects of it and whether it went right or went wrong and and I am, I can sit here and I can hypothesize, but I am really interested to see how it works out. Absolutely, and by the way, this bill, you know it's coming to the next blue state. Uh, The next next blue state legislature, you're gonna see this bill coming. I just know it. It's gonna be popular. I mean, it's states like New Jersey, California, that a lot of these real progressive bills come out and get implemented, and 10 years from now, we always see how they work out, and somehow we're always trying to undo them a little bit because they might have gone a little too far or had some real, effects that weren't necessarily uh, believed to have happened, but now we're facing them and they've been pretty detrimental. And that's the last thought. So that's prison gerrymandering, the dumbest bill in America. And thank you for joining Mark of the Millennials. This is Mark Fisher. Thank you to our millennial, Garrick Ross, and of course, our producer, Adam Katora, and our assistant producer, Christopher Hopkins. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and our website. See you next time.